every once in a while, these ancient buildings gives up just a little piece of a picture of the past. And that's exactly what this stone floor is. This is what is going to become the laundry room. Now we know from conversations we've had with the ex-mayor, whose grandparents used to be tenant farmers in this property many years ago, that this area we're in at the moment is what was used by the servants. This is where they would have lived in this area, the servants, the tenant farmers, and uh, it's where the people would have lived, but probably the animals too. They probably would have brought some of the animals in with them. Now, we have the ancient bread oven in the corner here that would have been where obviously they made their bread, but would have given them some heat as well. And when we first started working here, it was just a dirt floor. Ted and Pete dug down to give us some more height in the ceiling and found this remnants of a stone floor. There's not much of it left now, but it does give us that picture. It tells us that story that there was a stone floor in here at one stage. So my job today is to try and save the ancient stone floor before I start rebuilding the new stone floor. Now, We've put in a stone floor into the storage side of this room and, and that's gone down. So we've laid a new stone floor in there that will come out and meet this stone floor. But this is the old ancient stone floor that was uncovered. And the reason why I left this is because there was only a small section of it. As you chip away, you will see that between the stones at the moment, it's just mud just compacted mud and that's how they would have laid the stone floors. They would have put the stone down and just compacted mud. And um, back in obviously the 14th century, health and safety wasn't a big issue. They were more worried about surviving the plague than they were tripping over an uneven stone. But today we obviously have to think more about the fact that this is gonna be open to the public and we have to worry about the health and safety issue of people tripping. So. Not only do I need to try and save the old stone floor and repair it, but I also need to make sure that it's as flat as I can get it, that there are no huge stones that are going to cause a big problem. Now, over here, I have a big hole where there was a big stone sticking up. I've taken that out and I will replace it with a more flatter stone. The reason why I left this area is because as you rake out the old dirt in between for me to be able to put the new mortar in that we use now, the sand and the lime, the stones start to fall away. So I wanted to start building up my new floor to be able to compact this area and help secure it for while I'm raking out. Now that I've done that, I can start raking out the stone and infilling with the mortar. Now it's important that I try and rake out as much of the mud as I possibly can and get some deep areas for the mortar to go in to make sure that the floor becomes very compact, secure, and is going to last for a very long time. So, uh, yeah. It's great being able to work on something that you know is nearly 700 years old. It's mind-boggling.
So, because Lisa's downstairs working, I need to start tackling this room. And there's two areas we need to do first of all. We need to split this room into two. And so we need to put a central wall between the two. And we also need to build a bathroom. I think we're gonna tackle the bathroom first. So let's get to it. <laughs> I like to see you here. I like this ladder. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. I know. I think we should forget about doing the room and just have the ladder just for fun. <laughs> but I think it's cool. How are you getting on, baby? Yeah, it's just a lot of faffing around. <laughs> yeah, so we've got two sticks to go in now. Then two more that I can't put in because the board goes down that way and then you screw. So your board goes in there like that and then you screw this one to there. Then you can board this side so you don't get, you get a nice join in here. Cool. Nice join in there. Same with this one. But what I want to do is run these two in here and get the ends, get these done. So I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of the game. It's just, it always takes longer than you think it's gonna do. So when you... And as you can hear, I've shared everything with Ted. She's so lovely, isn't she? <laughs> I do like to share, baby. She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just cause she chased me all around there trying to play kiss chase. <laughs> kiss, 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 kiss. <laughs> oh no, no, go away. And now you've got me cold. And now I've got a full on cold, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so we'll do as much as we can do today.
cup of tea, my darling. How are you getting on? Shall I put that on the side for you? I don't know where, where, where a side is, but... Thank you. Wow, you're getting on really well. Yeah. Super duper. Yeah, it's going to look great. I'm just trying to level out as much as possible. I think you're doing a fantastic it job. It looks, it looks good as is. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's almost like a, what do you reckon, a light brushing back just to keep yeah. it where it is. And yeah. Yeah. But yeah, just trying to keep it there. It'll be such it's, a result. Um, it's quite a good time, actually, just to point something out. Because somebody made a comment a couple of videos ago when we laid the floor in the storage area about what a shame it was that we'd kept the stones so far apart with big amounts of mortar in between. And I think it's just a good point um, to make is that there isn't big gaps between the stones. You have these things that you, we call um, sacrificial stones. Now, obviously, when they laid floors like this, Bessie, get your paw prints off <coughs> until it's dry. Yeah. I've got paw prints down. Yeah. But yeah, back in the day, when you think in the 1400s, they weren't worried about whether you had a level floor or not, especially in this area, because it was servants. They didn't care about the servants. You know, there was no union reps then, was there, or sick pay. You know, you twist your ankle and you're off for a month and uh, get paid for it. You twist your ankle, you're out the, you know... Yeah, building, yeah, you're on the bread line. A queue of people down yep. the road waiting to take your job. So it was, back in those days, they didn't care. They just put the stones in. And whether it's level or not, it was a stone floor. Today, obviously, we have to think more about the health and safety issues. So underneath, where you see big areas of mortar, there are stones underneath. And they are the sacrificial stones that are doing their job, keeping the floor really secure and safe, but they're just not getting the credit for it. <laughs> yeah. There were very many jobs like that. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a very brilliant way of putting it. <laughs> so that the is, yeah, yeah. The scenes that do the work <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. underneath. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so it's just a good point to make is that it's not a shame because they are there and they are doing the job they're supposed to be doing. But in today's day and age, we have to the way we do the mortar is to try and level off the stone as much as we possibly can to make sure there's going to be no trip hazards. Um, the last thing I want to do is be coming in here collecting me washing, fall over a stone and hit my head on a stone wall. Because those stone walls don't move. <laughs> There's right. no giving them. You I hit know. yourself on them, you hurt yourself. I think that's a fabulous explanation. So, um, and hopefully that helps. Yeah, it's just to, just to let people under, sort of understand the way it actually I think, works. I think your, you know, your technique and your, uh, your experience in this um, is really good in the fact that what, you know, your doing this doing the floor in a certain way and you do your walls in a certain way you know when you want decorative and when you want from my point of view and this is purely my point of view not anybody else's um is that when you do the stone and when you do the stone i love the way you do it because you you have such you know a range of techniques where you you know the, you pick out all the little stones or you do the larger stones leaving that which always looks fabulous as well but with the floor, you're much more regimented as to what you can do. Yeah. Um, and so you, you have to be, like you say, you have to be, you have to think to yourself, right, I can't, you know, I can, I can leave the stones, but if they're flat, yeah. if they're flat, I can leave them out. Yeah. If they're going to be undulating, I need to put my worker stones in. Yeah. It's a bit like this. If you look, there's, there's a big cluster here of small stones. Now, quite a few of them are underneath the level of the other stones. Now, if I was to try to keep those stones visible, that would make a huge hazard for a trip there. So they're going to have to become um, the sacrificial stones. But I noticed that you did a lot more digging out than you normally would when you're doing a wall. And that is to reduce the, the uneven stuff, I presume, is it? Well, to reduce the uneven stuff, but also because you've got a lot of foot fall on this area. Obviously on a wall you haven't got loads of um, you know, foot, there's not foot full on No, so it doesn't foot. matter so, whether you undulate. But, well, it's not just the undulation it's also the thicker you put the mortar in, the harder it's going to become 
and the more long lasting it's going to become. So because this is actually going to have people treading on it, yeah. it needs to go down a lot further. You can't just put a thin layer of, um, of mortar because it would just crack as soon as somebody starts walking on it. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, so it's the thicker it is. Hopefully, this will uh, last a, a few more hundred years. You never know. Well, that was... Uh, there we go. We'll call that tea break. Education time. Education tea break. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for Right, we'll leave you to it, babe, and uh, we'll carry on. See you soon. So while Lisa's um, finishing up that floor and doing an absolutely stunning job, I've uh, I've been busy upstairs framing the bathroom. Oh, it's a bit dark in here, isn't it? Frame in the bathroom, and uh, now is to put in a central wall. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so we've done all the bathroom, and we now need to put in a central wall to split these two areas in this huge apartment. You have the main bedroom in this side with the main bed between these two beams here. But on the other side, to sort of give it a salon feel, we're gonna have like a sofa area which is gonna double up as two beds in case we have more than two guests wanting to stay in this room. ancient part of the floor now repaired not finished it needs to be brushed back and hopefully the weather's a little bit brighter now and not so damp hopefully for the next couple of days so I would really like to be able to get in here tomorrow and brush this back and see the finished article so fingers crossed we'll be able to come back tomorrow and see the end of it but uh, I'm pleased I got this done now because it means that once this is finished Tech can come in, we can get the washing machine, tumble dryers back, and we can finish that back wall. And um, yeah, and then start inlaying the rest of the stone floor. 
It's exciting. Fantastic, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, really, really nice. Yeah. I think it looks great. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, you've done a lovely job. Cool. You got your work cut out. Do the rest of it, though. Yeah. So, well, now I've done that. Yeah. Now it looks fantastic. The, the way. Yeah, it flows beautiful. Yeah. Do you yeah, think really it, it looks flat enough? No, oh, it's but you know it is what it is. It's it calls it flat enough. It's flat enough. It's. I tell you what. I'd love this in my workshop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's awful. You know, my, the, the other side of my workshop is just, you know, like a gully. And I've like cleaned it down canyon. here. And look, well, this a, looks nice. Yeah, the stone continues all yeah. the way through. So Yeah, I had a feeling that was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, because of this side. And, yeah. and I suppose, I just wonder why, what happened to the rest of it. Yeah. Because surely it was the same all the way through. I just wonder, when you think about it, the bread oven's there, so they would use that for cooking their bread in for heat as well and you know maybe they just had an area that they use that they wanted to keep clean so they had a stone floor and the rest of it was animals well, because, yeah but then you would have stone floor with animals because animals come in filthy dirty wet yeah I uh, so. hooves all that sort of business and they'll churn it yeah. up when, you know, so that's why they had stone floors in the barns yeah yeah and all that but you've got that doorway through there. Oh, so was yeah. it come through the doorway and this is, like you said, just this oh, area was done for. Yeah. And this was just used for something else. Don't know. We'll never it's know. It's crazy, isn't it? The amount we'll of questions know. and you never get the answers to them, no, will you? No, no. But I'm well, pleased I've got that done. So, yeah, um, yeah hard work, yeah. but I'm, I'm glad I got it done. Anyway, you've done really well upstairs. Yeah, doing all right. We're all framed up, ready. For the uh, the other bits and bobs, which is good. Um, now we can get people in the first fix and all that because I've done all my framing. Um, yeah, so happy with that. Yeah, it's good. It's good to define the areas. I like, it? you know, there's there's certain jobs of this job that I like, and the framing and the plasterboarding is one of my favourites. Is it? Yeah. Because I can lose myself in it. Yeah. I can. I know what I'm doing. Uh, I feel confident to know what I'm doing. And yeah, it's as much as you enjoy working hard. Yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah, it's good. So work continues. Progress continues. It is getting a bit tight now. Two weeks time, we are open for business. So that means that we're going to be quite restricted on the work that we can do. So as much as we can get done over the next couple of weeks is going to be fantastic. I did promise you the before and afters of the finished hallway. And the reason why you haven't had that yet is because we're just waiting for an electrician to come in and finish a few things. So hopefully next week you will be getting that. But also, special guest comes next week. It's a Charlene. Whee. Yeah, so yeah, loads of work for the Queen's Charlene. back in residence. We'll have to <laughs> hoist the flag up. Anyway, thank you all so much for joining us. A big thank you to Jane Kearns, Michelle, Kim Ward, and Diane for your Buy Me A Coffee. Thank you so much for that. And also a huge thank you to the Jones family and Debbie for your super yeah. thanks. And Dina. You've got another, you've got Dina on your hand. <laughs> Dina, super thanks. Dina. Dina, Dina and Debbie. Dina and Debbie yeah. and Jones and the, and Jones, the Jones family. family. Yeah. Thank wow, you so much, you're everybody. Fantastic. You're very, very fantastic, all of you. We, we love, love you all. We and love you uh, we'll see you again next time. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Have you told? Have you told? Like and subscribe. Yeah. And thumbs up. It doesn't cost a thing. <laughs> right. Come on. Cup of tea. Come on, doggies. Oh, I'm really pleased you got that one. If you'd like to leave a tip and buy us a coffee, see the link in the description. Or if you'd like to become a patron, see all the behind the scenes footage, uncut videos and Zoom chats with me and Ted. Also, see the link in the description. We'd love to have you as part of the family.